Hi everyone, it's once again my favourite time of year, the time where I get to gush a little about the albums that have completely knocked me out over the course of the last 12 months, and I get to crown the Champion of Champions as my favourite record of 2023. There of course can only be one overall winner, as not everyone can be the number one spot, otherwise why even have a numerically guided list in the first place? But I want to assure you of one very simple fact about the following 15 albums. Each and every one of these records has at some point for some amount of time held the top spot, only for a challenger to oust them at a point further down the line. In 2022 my top three albums were extremely easy to choose, with a slight degree of decision making needed for the remainder. This year though it has been extraordinarily difficult to decide on the order of these records. Everything in this list represents the very best of the best for me, and we are talking about a magnitude of millimetres between the placement of these albums. In truth, the record at number 15 may as well be at number 1 for how little there has been to choose between them all this year. When I've taken a step back to look at this list, I was honestly struck by how diverse and unusual it is. I'm not noticing a particular bias or trend towards any particular subgenre. This really is the most complete picture of my musical taste that I've seen in some time, running the gamut from dark to light, heavy to soothing and rough and smooth. It's been a hell of a year for every part of my musical brain, and 2023 has satisfied me in ways that few years have truly managed. Honestly, this has been one of the all-time greats for progressive music, and is surefire proof that the genre is alive and well, and its future is in excellent hands. But enough of my wibbling. Let's get right into the list and start at number 15. Into weaving until I collapse Trust my heart with the blinding lens Here's a twisted reflection of how it ends Kicking Things Off is one of the best debut albums of the year, but by no means the last. OK Goodnight caught my attention with their striking artwork, but kept me hooked with their incredible blend of Deer Hunter-esque progressive rock, darker, more sinister narrative passages, and an inescapable joy for the art of the album as a whole. Concept albums are a weakness of mine, and it feels like OK Goodnight have exploited that weakness in full, crafting a memorable story full of intrigue, twists, memorable characters, and a story that, while simple on the surface, was still capable of eliciting an extremely strong emotional connection from me. Whether you're being treated to beautiful, soulful vocals, epic guitar lines, memorable and infectious melodies, or all of the above at once, OK Goodnight's stunning debut album has kept me company for many an hour this year, and is a fitting start to this list. If you've not yet had the pleasure of the fox and the bird, then don't miss out, as this is certain to knock you for six, just like how it managed with me. I told you there'd be more than one debut album on this list, and the quote-unquote supergroup of Temic has more than earned their place in my top 15 with their incredible album Terror Management Theory. Starring some of the biggest names in progressive rock and metal, it's little to no wonder that this one hit me as hard as it did. Now, I won't pretend that this didn't take a few spins to really sink in for me, because it did. But once Temek had their claws dug in, I was helpless to resist their charms. Managing to outdo the efforts of his previous band, former Haken keyboardist Diego Tejeda feels like he's been let off the leash here, and his dueling and supportive playing alongside Eric Gillette's immaculate axe work makes for an album that is difficult to put down. Throw in some sumptuous vocal melodies, intricate drum work, thumping bass grooves, and an amazing sense of scale and restraint where needed, and you're left with an album that manages to skirt the line between technicality and melodic urgency with a kind of balletic grace and humility. An incredible album from start to finish and one of the most exciting new bands to enter the scene. Sometimes I want to feel absolutely unhinged. I want music to brutalise me in ways that I never thought possible. Now I've had this from bands like Pig Destroyer, Converge, and the Dillinger Escape Plan, but none of them have made me feel quite so filthy as Afterbirth I've managed with In But Not Of. This is the kind of music that makes me feel like I could spew acidic bile at my enemies. The kind of music I could degenerate into a feral statue at a mosh pit. 
The kind of music where I can abandon all sense of decorum and grace and just embrace the dirty, nasty, snarling ugliness of it all. And I absolutely fucking love it. Afterbirth have crafted one of the most disgusting records I've ever heard, but it manages to transcend the kind of barriers that this music often puts up by having a genuinely hidden beauty underneath it all that's waiting for those who are prepared to plumb the depths of its murky waters. I have honestly been unable to tear myself away from this album. It has scratched a primal itch that nobody else has been able to get close to this year. And while I can't say this is an easy recommendation for my core audience, I would say if you want music that challenges your perceptions and understanding of extreme music, then you can't afford to miss out on this one. Eyes, swollen skies, look for anchors, look for ties. One of the more recent entries into this list, Peter Gabriel's latest opus has been one that I've simply not been able to turn off from. As I myself am getting older and my life's priorities and responsibilities have grown, evolved and shifted, I've been able to appreciate the artful lyricism and beautiful poetry in this long-awaited album. It's one of the most exquisitely mastered, well-produced and immaculate sounding albums released this year, and that's regardless of which of the bright side or dark side mixes you end up preferring. And to say that the instrumentation and compositions on this album match the excellence of the mixing would be putting things very politely. I will quite comfortably call this one of the most ambitious, exciting, relevant and introspective pieces of art that Peter Gabriel has ever been associated with, and that includes his heyday with Genesis. There is something so, I don't know, warm, comforting and assuring about this album. Listening to this is like listening to the wisdom of a favourite grandparent, and it's hard not to feel a kind of strong emotional connection to the music here. An absolute late-game masterpiece from one of the most quintessential English voices in progressive rock. Sometimes you need someone else to show you how it's done, and Green Lung have taken Ghost's occult crown out of their ghoulish fingers and passed it on to the Druids of Albion with this absolutely stunning release. This heathen land represents everything that I wished Ghost could have been post-prequel, but also manages to stand so tall on its own merits that it doesn't cause a divisive split in my heart between the two bands. No other album released this year has been as immediately enjoyable as this one. I loved this heathen land from the very opening of its prologue track all the way to the delightfully epic conclusion of Oceans of Time. This record covers all the moods and attitudes I could have hoped for from a retro-sounding classic heavy metal band. The huge drums, the crunching, catchy riffs, the 1970s pulp cinema villainy of the vocals. It's been a record that's stuck with me like glue, and one that I've been thrusting upon everyone I can think of. This Heathen Land is effortlessly entertaining, ruinously addictive, and easily one of the most replayable records of the year. I Continuing the trend of 2023 being the year of the debut album, Denmark's press to enter absolutely wowed me with their delightful entry into the progressive rock space, managing to blend a perfect mix of catchy and accessible pop-like melodies with the complexity and intrigue of their stellar musicianship. From Mirror to Road came out of nowhere and hit me like a runaway train. I've always been a fan of more accessible music, and much as I do enjoy digesting a long-winded and complex record, there are times, certainly, where I need to be able to enjoy something on a more immediate level, and what Press to Enter have given us is something that comfortably satisfies both sides of my brain in that regard. Being equal parts catchy, as well as instrumentally deep and complex, is no mean feat, but to have done this as admirably and fluently as they have done on their debut record speaks to me of a band who are demanding of your attention, and one whom I cannot wait to see where their career takes them. Easily one of the most impressive debuts in recent years, miss this one at your peril. From one or two of the most immediately enjoyable records of the year, straight into one of the most complex ones. 
Dodd Heimsgard's Black Medium Current is an album that has been steadily growing in my estimations over the course of the year, blossoming into a beautiful, darkened, complicated and intricate bouquet of some of the most fascinating arrangements and otherworldly sounds I've heard all year. To try and pigeonhole this album into something as simple as just progressive black metal simply isn't good enough. Black Medium Current is an artistic statement that defies generic classification. Managing to scratch the avant-garde part of my brain in a delightfully satisfying manner, there really isn't much out there this year that sounds quite like this. Forming the very definition of good things coming to those who wait, Black Medium Current is an album that rewards the time you put into it unlike anything else. It is likely that your first few listens may result in a confused raise of the eyebrow, but to pass this one by after less than a dozen spins would be foolhardy, as underneath its thick and angular exterior lies one of the most breathtaking albums of the 2020s so far. Speaking of avant-garde weirdness, I present to you one of the most unusual yet endlessly fascinating albums I've heard all year. While not strictly speaking falling under the umbrella of progressive rock, this nonetheless carries itself with a kind of intrigue and fearless blend of creativity and arthouse sensibilities that any fan of progressive music at all would be mad to pass this one by. A concept album through and through, HMLTD's The Worm is an esoteric tale about the madness within, coming across ostensibly as a tale about a giant worm devouring medieval England. It is only as one truly listens to it that one begins to appreciate the nuance and subtleties to its greater depth and meaning. Combining a wickedly sharp narrative, dark sense of humour, as well as some of the quirkiest instrumentation and off-kilter compositions I've heard this year, The Worm is an experience unlike any other, and while not an easy recommendation owing to its overall strangeness, it is likely that if you are the kind of person who appreciates bold and inventive sounds, then you'll become as obsessed with this record as I have been. If I was to rank this list of albums by number of plays, then Bear Ghost's Jiminy would be so far ahead of everyone else, this list would have been a desperate rush to see who came in second place. This record is one of the most repeatable, enjoyable, and just downright fun experiences of the year, and one that I can easily recommend to just about anyone. You may or may not be a fan of the quirky, Zuma-style sense of humour about it all, this record is after all extremely self-aware, but you cannot deny the creativity in its musicianship, the bombastic and addictive vocal runs, and just the overall sense that everyone involved in the album is having such a tremendously good time with it. I found myself feeling so inspired by this album, wishing that I could write something half this entertaining or quirky, but ultimately resigning myself to the reality that I'll never be even remotely close to crafting something so well refined and addictive. But honestly, so long as Bear Ghost are able to crank out music this enjoyable, I'm quite happy to let them take the reins when the ride is this good. Honestly, an unmissable album, and easily the record that's most likely to elicit an immediate reaction from most people. In the absence of some of my favourite bands cranking out classics like they used to, we are at the point now where other bands have taken on the Thanos-like approach of fine, I'll do it myself. And there are a few entries on this list that have taken this on board quite like Obsidian Tide have done with the Grand Crescendo. I miss pre-Heritage Opeth. Like, I miss it a lot. But Obsidian Tide have made me miss that a whole lot less, as this album very much picks up the torch from where Ghost Reveries and Watershed left it, and carries it off into its own exquisite and deeply memorable new direction and territory, managing to capture the spirit of those albums, but while sounding so unique to themselves. This is so much more than just an Opeth worshipping album. This is taking the blueprint of the Swedish masters and making it something new, daring, bold, and exciting, but still retaining the undying spirit of what I loved so much about those early albums from Opeth. Obsidian Tide have wormed their way into my heart and done what I felt was almost impossible. 
made me realise that I don't need to keep hoping for an old band to pick up their old tricks again. When bands like Obsidian Tide are doing what they've done here, and carrying the torch in their own style, then the future of progressive death metal is in excellent hands indeed, and I'm very excited to see what comes next from these guys. The slow burn is always the one that burns brightest for me, and no other album this year has encapsulated the spirit of this more than the stunning debut album from The Anchorette. It all began with loneliness. Now, I enjoyed this album on my first few listens and gave it an appropriately glowing review earlier this year, but something about this record has grown and grown within me over the course of the entire year. It's hard to put my finger on what exactly it is, but there is a wisdom and maturity to the songwriting here, a depth and resonance in the compositions and instrumentation that defies description, and a perfect blend of classic progressive rock hedonism, modern progressive metal showmanship, and an overall humility and restraint from everyone involved that manages to keep everything in check for a package that impresses on the outset, but with time and dedication unfurls itself to become one of the absolute best albums of the year across all genres. To say that I have been bowled over by the Anchorette would be putting things extremely mildly. They have risen to becoming one of my favourite new bands in the genre, and stand tall and proud as some of the leaders of the next generation of progressive metal. I am extremely excited by what their debut has given us, and whatever comes next from the band surely cannot come soon enough. I love me a bit of cinematic scope and power, and few bands this year have delivered on that description quite so well as Earthside's long-awaited sophomore album, Let the Truth Speak. This record was easily one of my most anticipated albums of the year, and it hasn't disappointed me in any way whatsoever. Managing to up the scale and power of their already incredible debut, A Dream in Static, Earthside have clearly demonstrated that the extended break between albums certainly wasn't due to them sitting around on their asses doing nothing. Collecting once again an elite crew of guest vocalists, the band have crafted some of the most vast-sounding, imaginative, complicated, and fascinating compositions of their careers, leading me to genuinely wonder how on earth they'll be able to do one better than this if we are fortunate enough to get a third album out of them. Breadth and scope of the ambition on this album is unparalleled, managing to expertly blend the headbanging riffs and blistering guitar work you'd come to expect from a virtuosic progressive metal band with the grandiosity and pomp of an epic film score. The stylistic fusion that Earthside have produced here is nothing short of breathtaking, and this remains one of the most jaw-dropping, rewarding, and creative albums of the year. And with the nice pick in his chest, stricken down in cold blood and murder. Coming in at the third spot, it's no mean feat to say that No Spoon are the clear and obvious winners of the debut album of the year. And in a year where there's been so many outstanding choices for this award, it's hard to think of ways that they can possibly do better than their stunning entry into the world of progressive metal. No Spoon have managed to capture the lightning in a bottle that Haken managed back in 2010, but in many ways have one-upped even that incredible debut. Opus feels like precisely that, an immaculately crafted epic concept album that manages to tick all the right boxes, as well as creating some entirely new ones for other bands to aspire to when they make their own entries into this world. I have found myself completely enraptured in No Spoon's web of complex musicianship, incredible vocals, catchy melodic hooks, and genuinely fascinating narrative woven throughout the record. It really does feel like the quintessential modern progressive metal concept album, managing to satisfy every part of my brain, both light and dark sides, in equal measure. It's an album that impresses immediately, and only carries on impressing as the nuances to the experience make themselves known. When the chips are down, I'm a progressive death metal kind of guy. If pushed to decide on my genre of choice, it would likely come up as top dog every single time. 
So when I tell you that Omnirod's The Immensal Rise is one of the best progressive death metal records of the 2000s so far, you know I mean business. This Belgian band has absolutely annihilated me and set a new kind of standard for what I will come to expect from future entries into this particular subgenre. Never before have I encountered a band who so fluently managed to blend the quirkiness and eccentricities of the Devon Townsend project with the fury and savagery of Strapping Young Lad, all tied up with a neatly between the buried in me shaped bow. There's a kind of animalistic brutality to it all, but it's as equally tempered by big, sweeping moments of the spaces between spaces and experimental atmospherics to help make the time between getting your head smashed apart feel more relaxing. I cannot stress enough how hard it was for me to put this album in the number two spot instead of the number one. But ultimately, my brain had a final battle of good versus evil, light versus dark, and clean versus scream. And ultimately, as death pilled as my musical brain is, and how essentially faultless this record is, this year, the good guys won. Yes, yes, I know, I know, it's just come out. Yes, I know, I haven't had as long to listen to this one as the other albums on this list. And yes, I know, it's madness to put it this high when you consider the other records in this list. And how I just said that I really wanted to put Omnirod at number one. But honestly, I've had to follow my heart on this one. Nothing else this year, nothing else has come as close to being as emotionally devastating to me as Himmlerbach and Volume 2 has been. I've wept, I've screamed, I have openly and without hesitation sobbed my eyes out to this album on multiple occasions and often without fail. There's not a great deal here that I can't say that I haven't already covered in my 18 minute long review of the album, but I will summarise as best as I can for the purposes of this top 15 list. Himmlerbark and Volume 2 is the kind of album that only happens once in a generation, the kind of game-changing, life-altering, spectacular monument to just how wonderful a genre progressive rock can truly be. This is everything I wished it would be. Everything I had ever hoped and dreamed of for this album. For it to be as complete, as perfect, as orally stunning and emotionally weighted as this is, is nothing short of a miracle. Himmlerbark and Volume 2 is my favourite album of 2023, and could very well be the best album of the 2020s so far. It is a masterpiece that deserves to be heard by everyone, and I cannot wait to go and listen to it again after I finish recording this. So, there we have it guys, that's my top 15 albums of 2023. I know there's going to be a lot of raised eyebrows amongst some of you. Where's Haken, I hear you cry. What about Tesseract, you might wail, and whatsoever have you got against Roger Waters and his redux version of Dark Side of the Moon? To this I say plain and simple, my list, my rules. Sometimes you just gotta make hard decisions, and believe me when I tell you that hard decisions were made. This was the most challenging album of the year list I've ever had to do, even before I started making YouTube videos. But enough about me, <laughs> what about you? What did you love? Now that we're staring down the barrel of 2024, what's been the album that's knocked your socks off this year? And what are you most looking forward to in 2024? Let me know by commenting down below. If you did like this video, please do thumb it, share it around with anyone else who you think will probably enjoy it, and please do consider subscribing to the channel for more content. There's going to be a killer 2024 coming, and I'd love to have you with me along for the ride. I will leave my link tree down below where you'll find all the places to find me on social media, as well as a link to my coffee page if you're feeling particularly generous and want to help support the growth of the channel. But until next time, guys, as always, keep your rhyme signatures extremely odd. <laughs>